hello in this video we will discuss about the cardiac output so it is donated do, donated by co so this heart output we will discuss in this video so heart output means the cardiac output so what is cardiac output we will discuss in this video so first of all we should need to understand the structure of heart so this is i am drawing the structure of heart which that we will discuss with the different part so the human contain four chambered heart this four chambered is the left atrium and right atrium as well as, as, well as a right uh, ventricle and left ventricle so this is the right atrium and right ventricle this right atrium and right ventricle is a not a uh, hard as compared to the left atrium and left ventricle because it pump the blood throughout the body so this is the tricuspid valve and this is the bicuspid valve between the left atrium and ventricle while the right atrium and ventricle contain tricuspid valve and this is the descending aorta and this is the superior and inferior vena cava which that carry the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium to the right ventricle so after this pump th through semi lunar valve from the ventricle the right ventricle toward the uh, toward the lungs after the oxygenation through exhalation uh, inhalation and exhalation the respiration will move the pulmonary vein contain oxygenated blood toward the left atrium to the left ventricle and after this go through aortic valve to the descending aorta and aortic arch toward the body for the oxygen providing and the can uh, receiving the carbon dioxide to again move into the superior and inferior vena cava to drain the blood into the right atrium to the right ventricle so what is the tricuspid here is a three leaflet containing tricuspid valve and bicuspid is the um, two leaflets so i hope you make sense about these things so here is the definition of the cardiac output it is the volumetric flow rate of hearts pumping out that is the volume of blood being pumped by both ventricles of the heart so the both ventricle when constrict in this way the systolic blood pressure the systolic phase of the heart which that pump out the blood is known as the ejection of the blood but completely not eject so here is the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system we will discuss but first of all we should need to understand the input and output of the heart so let's begin to understand first input input mean the blood move into the ventricle atrium to the ventricle and fill the ventricle and the dilation of the heart it mean relaxation of the heart not contraction in this way the diastolic blood pressure will be occur it is equal to 80 mm of mercury we can check through stethoscope and the blood pressure measuring uh, meter so on the other hand the relaxation of heart chamber when occurs so the filling of the blood into the right and left ventricle completely and toward the output will be due to the systolic blood pressure systolic blood pressure mean the contraction of heart chamber and that is why it is con uh, equal to the 120 mm of mercury anyhow after the con constriction but remember one more important things the complete uh, ejection of blood will not occur due to the complete constriction but the again again when the systolic uh, phase the again feel to eject so i hope you make sense and let's begin to understand the end diastolic volume basically so this is the output so the end diastolic volume is equal to 120 ml blood in the heart while the end systolic volume is equal to 50 ml uh, ml ml so in this way the ejection volume or stroke volume is equal to 70 ml why 
because the ejection fraction is the ejection fraction is equal to ejection volume per divided by end diastolic volume so the end diastolic volume we will divide in this way here you can see the 70 ml over 120 ml uh, is equal to 58 percent and the normally 60 percent will be ejected while the 40 percent will remain into the uh, ventricle so this is the cardiac output is basically co is equal to heart rate into systolic uh, uh, sorry stroke volume so the heart rate is equal to 70 beats per minute and in this way the cardiac output is equal to cardiac uh, heart rate into systolic uh, volume stroke volume sorry which so the cardiac output is equal to uh, the complete per minute per ml ml per minute is the 400 uh, 4900 ml per minute so remember the 4900 ml per minute is the cardiac output and normally due to the 70 beat per minute so that is why if the 70 beat per minute so in this way here is i am drawing for the understanding the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and how change the heart rates stroke volume and cardiac output so this during the rest and digest the parasympathetic vagal nerve will stimulate from the brain toward the heart and after this neurotransmitter will lead to a low the rate of heart and the stroke volume and cardiac output will be decreased during the rest time while here is the parasympathetic nervous system which that is enhance the fight and flight response will lead to increase the cardiac output and stroke volume will decrease and the heart rate will be increased so the collectively the cardiac output will increase while here is the hormonal changes which that is the sympathetic nerve fiber the adrenergic nerve which that stimulate the adrenal gland uh, adrenal medulla and cortex after this the epinephrine and norepinephrine will be produced this epinephrine and norepinephrine as well as the cortisol which that will target the blood vessel uh, and will lead to blood vessel constriction and due to the higher blood pressure and increase the glucose through cortisol so the hyperglycemia will lead to blood pressure increase so this is the blood vessel and the heart rate will be increased due to this hormonal action and the stroke volume will be decreased while the cardiac out output will be increased so anyhow this is the basically is the blood vessel so on the other hand let's begin to understand the factor affecting the heart rate and the stroke volume factor affecting stroke volume so what is the factor which that will change the cardiac out output and uh, through a heart rate and the stroke volume so here is the factor affecting the heart rate and this is the factors affecting the stroke volume so in this way here is the venous return feeling time hormones and vasodilation and vasoconstriction will affect due to the uh, due to stroke volume effect while here is the venous return will direct the atrial reflex target the atrial reflex and in this way here you can see the preload and contractility and afterload which that depend this through hormones and the venous return the preload and filling time and which that will uh, basically depend and in this way the contractility will increase for example when hormones will increase and afterload is due to the vasodilation or vasoconstriction and in this way here is the hormones and the autonomic innervation which that is the factor affecting the heart rate which that is basically increase the heart rate while on the other hand here you can see the end diastolic volume and that end systolic volume collectively which that is a stroke volume which that we can negative negative uh, basically both so here is the cardiac output is the basically the heart rate into the stroke volume uh, affect due to the several process and several factors 
so the tachycardia and bradycardia we will discuss so the tachycardia is the irregular fast heartbeat due to the sympathetic and other diseases uh, arrhythmias cause and the bradycardia mean the irregular heartbeat but slow beat per minute a low beat uh, and the low blood pressure and the parasympathetic nervous system activation so this is the mechanism the factor affecting the heart rate the factor affecting the stroke volume so uh, different things so thanks for watching please make sure to subscribe this video about the cardiac output so you can understand so thanks for watching bye please make sure to subscribe like and share